Arsenal Test Match, South Africa versus the West Indies, live on SABC3. We're at Sahara Oval, St. George's, and it's bathed in sunshine. What a wonderful day once again. Day three of this Castle Test Match, and that's what it looks like at present. 408 for the West Indies, having been asked to bat first by Graham Smith. Fantastic work by Chanderpaul and Samuels, and also Gale to start things off. South Africa in response, 122 for five. They would never have expected it, particularly after the West Indies got so many runs. The West Indies bowlers, Darren Powell, as well as Jerome Taylor, have got the wickets that have put their team in a good position. A.B. de Villiers on 22 not out. He is out there with Mark Boucher, who is on 18. And the two of them will have to bat very, very well and see off this first session. And I dare say build further into the day together because they're the last recognized batting pair of the South African team. So the match as it stands is delicately poised. And day three normally is a day when the match moves forward. Alongside me is Jeffrey Dujon, who will obviously be quite happy with how the West Indies have gone in the first couple of days. Morning, Duj. Morning, Pommy, and morning to all our viewers. And as Pommy said, it's a beautiful day here at Port Elizabeth. The West Indies in a commanding position. And I'm sure we're, we're going to have an interesting day's cricket. South Africa five wickets down the last two recognized batsmen at the crease. There's a lot to do. 286 behind South Africa. This match tilted in the West Indies direction. Seems that one of these two batsmen looks like A.B. de Villiers brought the wrong tool to work <laughs> probably left the change room with his practice back oh. what you have to do as the 12th man under Nell's not 12th man he's actually in the team what you have to do for your batsman normally is bring out all the bats they have in their coffin or in their bag because then they make a choice they decide on which bats their favorite and which their second and third and so forth is and will not settle for anything else under normal circumstances and these are normal circumstances so the rest have to come out you have to ask what was happening in the change room before the start of play Well, you can safely assume that a little bit of nerves were involved. South Africa not in the best of positions at this point. And a lot depending on this pair. But he's squared away now, A.B. de Villiers, and we should be on our way in a minute or two. Reasonably good bowling performance yesterday by the West Indies. Fell away a bit at the end. Sort of lost the plot ball a little bit too short, especially Fidel Edwards. And we possibly may not see him first up this morning. Might be Darren Powell from the other end. Chris Gale, as I would, opting for accuracy. But we're away. Taylor. That's up it. in the air shouts of catch it fine legs under it and he takes a very very good catch had to run some distance to his right darren powell and took a fine catch so the breakthrough mark boucher is gone and south africa are six down well i'm not sure how sensible this was from mark boucher hasn't faced too many deliveries and much like Dwayne Bravo yesterday gets a top edge and a good catch from Darren Powell running in had to make a lot of ground 
and event eventually an athletic catch so the sixth south african wicket goes down mark boucher is gone for 20 it's 129 for six 129 for six south africa things got well they've just got a little bit harder in fact a lot harder because the first of their bowlers has come to the wicket it's paul harris in his ninth test match he's going to have to bat a while and he's also going to have to get some runs they trail by 279 so 80 more to get to avoid that follow-on he's not on strike though because the two batsmen crossed before the catch was completed close very close and that's more like it batsman doesn't look that comfortable out there and this delivery passing very close to that off stump nicely done short and wide and AB de Villiers got it in the gap nicely played a square cut This is an example that there's not a lot of pace in this pitch. Maybe the Villiers able to get on top of that and look where he hit it. Had it come on with a bit of pace, this would have gone square. But able to meet it early and force it through that vacant area at cover. One thirty seven for six things rather difficult for South Africa the West Indies looking to press on and get through this order changing the commentary box Robin Jackman and Kepler Vessels thanks Tommy good morning everybody hope you're sitting comfortably and I'll begin shot had a run away for four De Villiers has played with authority this morning Losing Boucher, his last sort of batting partner, would have been a blow to him, as well as to South Africa. It's never easy batting with tail enders, quite knowing your mind is on two things instead of only one. He played this shot with a lot of class. Morning, Kepler. Morning, Robin. He has. It's very strong. Square of the wicket on the offside. This was a short delivery. Just sat up. There's no future in bowling short on this pitch. Best results come when you draw the batsman forward there's some fanatical fans you see that he wants to go to Lords that lad it wasn't quite the idea oh he's hit that but there's a man out there won't get there I, must say, I thought he'd hit that a little bit better and sweeter than uh, it uh, transpired to be I came off the top edge and there is a field at square leg specifically for the miscue and this certainly was a miscue so just as well that he didn't hit it any better because it could have gone straight to the fielder there so a bit of Elias gets away with this one short delivery sits up top edge it's in the air for uh, quite some time stroke four run away down that hill and he is a sweet timer of the ball David the videos at his best that's an excellent stroke very good timing this is a good batting surface delivery just uh, over pitched David the videos gets his weight through the line and hit it beautifully Might well be four more. Fine leg. Chases round but can't get there. That's the end of the over. 
158 now for six. De Villiers on 49. That final boundary took uh, A.B. de Villiers to 2,000 runs in Test cricket. He's playing his 59th innings. Good over from a South African point of view. Back-to-back -back boundaries to finish the over. There's the one. And uh, that takes him to his 12th Test 50, along with uh, three centuries. But the good news that I promised you is that uh, he quite likes batting against the West Indies. He averages 72 against them from a career average of 36. Two of the 300s he's scored has been against the West Indies, and this is his second 50 against them. Should be four, full delivery outside off stump, thick outside edge, runs away down towards third man. It's an annoying partnership this from a West Indian perspective. Well, that was full and no chance of that going in the air. Maybe the Villiers just squeezing it wide of second slip. No third man, so maybe four more. That's a great delivery. That is well bowled by Dwayne Bravo. Hit the top of off stump. David de Villiers thought he had it covered, but uh, an excellent delivery to bring to an end a good innings. Well, I didn't think he'd expect it to get a delivery like this, A.B. de Villiers. But that one just straightening enough. Maybe didn't move his feet as he should have. He certainly moved them after it hit the off stump. But did just enough to beat the outside and hit the top of off stump. A.B. de Villiers goes for a well-played 59. South Africa 172 for 7. So Andre Nell coming to the wicket now. He's been working hard on his batting. Made a couple of handy little contributions, but uh, needs to do a lot more to improve that average of 9. No 50s. Best of 33. That was Pakistan, if I recall correctly, recently. Of luck there inside edge should bring two and does good over by Dwayne Bravo 55 overs gone now 174 for seven we'll look at that delivery that got the wicket of AB de Villiers just did a little bit off the seam and may be a victim of faulty footwork Maybe De Villiers didn't quite cover that off stump. See where that back foot is, just outside leg stump. Didn't come across and ball just did enough to hit the top of off stump. Joy there for Bravo and why not? It's an excellent delivery. That's well struck. Straight through the line two bounces and over the ropes well that's his area if you've done your homework you know that that's where Andre Nell is going to look to hit the ball all the time he likes to hit through the line likes to hit over mid off it's a good shot this one actually on the up good weight transfer through the ball nothing wrong with that technically Dwayne Barbo causing some problems here just before the lunch break. It's bowled a good spell. And everything happens 
As that one darted back at him, everything happens from that off stump line. That's where the batsmen have had problems. Be it short or pitched up, things have happened from there. And he's going to be out. Tried to force it off the back foot and only managed to spoon it to Jerome Taylor at mid-off. Paul Harris goes. He's been was there for a long time. 67 deliveries for his nine runs, but he's got to go. Difficult to know what he was trying to do there, but he was trying to hit it over the mid-off of the back foot, which is a very difficult shot for a top order batsman to play but anyway he didn't get hold well taylor didn't see it initially but did well to catch it eight wickets down now 181 for eight uh, dale stain comes out to join andre nell as south africa tried to prolong their first innings almost on the stroke of lunch now Dwayne Bravo just picked up the wicket of Paul Harris That last delivery didn't bounce, end of uh, an over that produced another wicket. So it's 59 overs gone now, 181 for eight. Well, this is the dismissal of Paul Harris. Tried to hit through the line off the back foot to get it over mid off and didn't time it as he would have liked and only managed to spoon it to Jerome Taylor misjudged it slightly but in the end held on to it all 14 hours hasn't got a breakthrough and I don't think he's really worked out where he wants to where he needs to be pitching the ball on this on this pitch it's been a bit short he's been a bit too on the stumps And that's well hit. That is a solid blow from Andre Nell. Straight over mid on. Couple of bounces, four more. Second boundary for Andre Nell. We said earlier that he looks to come forward and hit straight back over the bowler's head. This delivery was pitched up for him. Got hold of it nicely over mid on. A genuine shot everything in the right place everything pointed in the direction the ball went well Andre Nell was waiting for that one the front foot went out to leg stump he was looking for the hook shot it wasn't a particularly good bouncer Nicely played from Dale Stain. Just guided it down to third man. Not an edge by any means. There's nobody at third man, so he'll get four. You can understand the logic of bringing your strike bowler on now. That's right, but then he's just got to think about his length and the line that he bowls. Instead of being all over the place, trying to do too many different things, just settle into a good basic pattern. You get the feeling that had it been left up to Chris Gill, I don't think he'd have brought Edwards on. I think Edwards' presence is really due to that message that came out from John Dyson. Because Sammy was doing well, wasn't conceding any runs, was doing what needed to be done. 
see it becoming an impossible pitch to bat on day five. In the air, out. Now, trying something a little bit different, suddenly did a little shuffle, shimmy across the middle and off. Hit the ball quite sweetly, but straight to mid on. Bravo's patience been rewarded. Figures of three for 24 now, busy with his 13th over. Just that persistent line and length outside of stump. This occasion a bit straighter. It's brought the wicket of Andre now. Nine down now, South Africa, with Mackay and Tinney to follow. Breezy little knock from Andre now, gone for 16. It's 194 for nine. Mackay and Tini comes in in uh, a familiar position for him, number 11. find the middle of the bat a couple of times and give us some entertainment Ooh, scores 194 for nine previous lowest totals by South Africa against the West Indies 141 in Kingston batting first and uh, 195 at home in 98-99 guess where right here batting third in that game The dismissal in slow motion. Well, that's up in the air. There could be a collision here. No. Left for fine leg and the innings is over. Another good catch. It swirls around up there. You can see by uh, the way that he is indicating. Clear, clear blue sky. Well caught. West Indies have fielded very well indeed. They batted very well in the first innings and they bowled okay. There are areas that they still say they can improve. So look out South Africa. Now South Africa have really got to do the business. Another good catch, Darren Powell. This was up in the air for a long time. There's a fair breeze out there and in the end a very well judged and taken catch. So that's going to mean South Africa will have a bowl. Tini just trotting off there, get those bowling boots on. Dale Stone wanted nothing of it. Wasn't interested whether South Africa have a, a follow-on to try and avoid or try and hang in there as long as possible. It was not to be, so they'll be delighted with their work and they deserve it. Captain's been good, he's led well. Now, it remains the second innings. This can set up the match, and who knows, potentially even the series here for the West Indians. Warm applause all round. They would be delighted, absolutely thrilled with their performance. Surprised everyone. If we may say, perhaps even surprised themselves. The story of the South African innings, contributions, some starts up front, but De Villiers hung in there, played well for his 59. Got a really good one from Bravo. Would have knocked over most batsmen. But uh, I'll look back on that and understand and know that they have to play well. Whichever way they look at it, and they've got a test match to try and save here. With a bit of luck, some really bad cricket from the West Indians, one doesn't know. They may even end up on the good side, but the good cricket so far, without doubt, has been played by the West Indians. Everybody contributed with the ball one way or another. Fidel Edwards would be disappointed he didn't get on the wicket sheet, but Powell Taylor did the early damage, and then Bravo nipped in at the death there, ending up with four for 24. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Beginning of the West Indies second innings. They lead by in excess of 200. 213 to be absolutely precise. Having bowled out South Africa. And put themselves in a position where they could have asked them to follow on if they wanted to. They decided not to do that, as was uh, the general feeling up here anyway, that that is what they would do. Put the light roller on the pitch. And now for South Africa to get back into this game, they have got a bowl very, very well indeed. Darren Ganga making his way to uh, the non-striker's end. Just over 2,000 runs at an average of under 30, so you'll want to put that right. 
to get it up to closer to 40 than 30. And his captain, Chris Gale, with a very different pedigree altogether. He is closer to 40, averages 38, 4,500 runs, 7 centuries, 28.50s, and now the extra responsibility of captaincy. And the first thing, Daryl, that's going to interest me is what sort of fields Crown Smith can afford to set here in terms of how much can he attack. He has to give uh, Stein and Tini a chance. By that I mean he'll, he'll look to attack for a while, but it'll be uppermost in his mind. The 213, at what stage does he decide, well, I've got to try and ensure that we drag this game out. Leave ourselves as little time as possible to back to save the match. It's going to be a test of his captaincy, the use of his bowlers, how well they bowl in partnerships. Used to follow. Often in these sort of times, uh, it's clear for you to see there's one or two firm options. We've just got to be at our best. And that's what he'll be asking of all his bowlers, all his fielders. They've got to take all their half chances. Dale Stain. It's for the first boundary of this innings. Sweet timing from Gale on this occasion. Normally, most of the boundary he hits, he, it's brute force and strength. He just lays that big heavy bat on this one. It screams through the covers. Up in the air, there's a man back. It's Makai Antin. It's gone for six. He ran in because he felt that it was the top edge and he hadn't got all of it, Chris Gale. But it just kept going. He's not happy, Dale Stain. Well, he couldn't control this. Chris Gale got a, a top edge, but fortunately for him, the wind is blowing in that direction and ball stayed in there a long time and carried over the boundary. Cayentini having no chance at that one. So a streaky six to Chris Gale. Takes him on to 12 but not looking particularly comfortable to the short stuff from Dale Stain. Yeah, you look at that and you think, well, as the man at final leg, could you have been better positioned for it? Well, Shot, that's four. A full toss. We're going to go in the block hole. Dale Stain and Chris Gale onto it in a flash. And it's gone like a rocket to the boundary. Adding insult injury he feels the ball before should really have been a chance for him he feels he's being punished unjustly well Graham Smith needs to start thinking now because if Chris Gale gets loose and there's another flurry he can take the game away from South Africa very quickly shot it's gone over well the signal is four from umpire russell tiffin look from where we sit like it had gone over the boundary well he's all over the place dale stain his captain runs up to have a word with him trying to settle him down short wide and chris gale gets the use of his arms Time this pretty sweetly. Dropping just inside the boundary. So it's time for a little rethink. 6-4-4. Four, four. 14 from the over so far. South Africa can't afford this. The required rate, the required total has gone up to 236. In very quick time. A barrage of short deliveries from Dale Stan. There was a bit of a chat between 
skipper and bowler. Graham Smith ran up from first slip. Right up to Dale Stan and uh, had a bit of a chat. See on that leg side, the man flashing there's And a deep backward square. And he's there for the pull. They're looking to get him to pull in. He's just being moved round further behind square. And that's been it in front of square. A long, long way in front of square. And across the boundary for the third four off the over. And this was a good shot. Controlled shot. Just a bottom hand paddle by Chris Gale. There's no one at mid wicket. And he just put the bat on it. Firm bottom hand and just whipped it away. Nicely in control out of the middle of the bat. Didn't have to keep it down. Well timed. Oh, goodness me. That's off the edge and it's flown a long way. A really good delivery from Makai Antini across the left hand and that bit of bounce from this park drive in. Off the edge, he's tried to leave it and it's gone for four over the slips. Uh, the extra bounce did him there, Chris Gale. But just kept the face of the bat reasonably open. And between that and the top edge, safely away over the slips. Done with pace as well. That was on to him before he, he expected it. South Africa have to fight hard to get back in this. Gone! Wonderful delivery. It's pitched outside leg stump and with the angle gone across. Chris Gale forced to play and just a thin little edge to keep a mark voucher. So South Africa have got the breakthrough that they so, so dearly want. Well, he'd been giving him problems in this area. And Chris Gale here, no foot movement, allows the ball to go across him and has a nibble. Good low catch from Mark Boucher. So South Africa get their first wicket. Chris Gale's gone for 29. It's 32 for one. 32 for one, the West Indies. Renarko Morton walks to the wicket, and that's a look at his career. 11 matches, 414 runs. He's got 350s, a best of 70 not out. Needs to play well for his team. Got 33 in the first innings, got himself in. Couldn't go on. His side lead by 245 runs. Need to build on that and put themselves in a winning position. Still lots of cricket to play, though. And a big job to be done. And Dini's been on song. He's renowned for bowling really well at left-handers because he gets the ball to go across them and tends to find the right length. That was the key right there. The ball went across, but it was the right length and at the stumps. Chris Gale, unsure whether to go forward or back, so caught on the crease and just fending at the ball. Nice little edge, and Mark Boucher gobbles that up. And Tini, as he's done so often in the past, getting a breakthrough for his team. That went away. That's a better stroke. No need to run for that. Just straining length there, Mackay and Tini. Just to come back to the batting now, are you you comfortable with that uh, the composition of that lineup? If you look further down the line to England to Australia, with a with a setup or the lineup as it looks at the moment. I am. Um, there are calls for maybe a change up the order. Hey. 
No chance of a run date. Beautiful. Whilst talking about the present, beautifully stroked away for four. This is a very correct player, Darren Ganga. This one was right in the slaughter. Loosner from Nell. And he was all over it. Didn't quite get that front foot across, but certainly let his hands go through the line. It may not be a coincidence that this team is playing better than they've played for a long time. The first time they've had some, someone new in the dressing room. It's nicely played. That'll go down the ground as well. Talking about Ganga's correctness. That brings in four more. Nice high left elbow. It's not uh, just staying with that theme. I think this is a, a, a an excellent change by uh, Graham Smith. Substituting same for same, not necessarily in terms of pace, obviously, but Jack Callis gets the ball to go away from the bat. And uh, Ronaco Martin hasn't looked particularly comfortable to the ball going away from him. That's a good appeal, and he's sent him. Caught him coming forward, Ronaco Martin. That ball didn't move away. Pitched just about off stump and seemed to come back just slightly. And Jack Callis has taken a wicket with his first delivery. And now come Morton goes for five. And let's have another look. Yeah, there was pad and then back. Man, that's a very brave decision by the umpire. I think it's a correct one too. Absolutely. 57 for two. That brings the uh, first innings hero, or one of them, Marlon Samuels, to the crease. So Marlon Samuels, fresh off 94 in the first innings, and a doer 94 for him. Are we seeing the uh, more bold half stop, just one? I think it might be that we're seeing the emergence of a new Marlon Sanders in terms of attitude. Well, he batted with a lot of character in the first innings. This delivery catching him on the crease and probably just straightening a little bit. He showed that he applied himself more than I've seen him apply himself before. Short batted with a lot of character, a lot of patience, and. Hopefully that will have taught him that that's the way to go. Amla. Let's have a look at that wicket one more time. We'll see a couple more slow motions. There's a decent stride in there. That's where it's hit him then the bat. Definitely pad bat. It does add a new dimension to the overall decision. That looks out, doesn't it? Well, Hawkeye okay, says it would have hit the stumps. The only issue I would have had was would have been one of height. Hit just above the knee roll, and he was pretty much down the track. So my my issue would really have been one of height. Little stretch and teeny. Yeah, it was always going away from him. It was, he started to escort it for a little bit, but it was always going away from him. That's the second time he's knocked that security guard out of his chair. <laughs> you know, this was very full and sweetly timed by Marlon Samuels. He's in good nick. And Makaya not having enough time to get down to that one
good shot. It's the outside half of the bat, but he's got enough on it. It's a teaser for Hashim Amla. Can't get there. Four runs. Half volley. Samuel's batted very well in the first innings. For his 94. I was quite impressed with the way he played there, I must admit, because you normally associate him as somebody who will come out and hit the ball and try and play the big shots, but he was very disciplined in that first innings. I took a no ball when he was on 14, so then he really buckled down, got his head down and concentrated well. His shot selection was good. Shot. Square drives very well, Karen Ganga. Nice way to end the over. 80 for two. Gets away with one. And the pressure is now being released. Probably be a boundary, in fact it is. A theory worth discussing during the next over. 88 for two. Correction, 92 for two. Whoever sticks this thing up is a little on the slow side on our little um, mini scoreboard that we have in the in the commentary box. That was a good shot, that just a little short and middle of the bat, back of the square with power. Oh, good stroke, beautiful stroke, over pitched and just smashed back down the ground. Marlon Samuels at his best with that occasion. Before I lose the plot, we'll see a replay here. He might say that and, that, and interpret that, that. That means if the other guy gets two and over, we will be at the target that's being set by whatever time it's being set. Good stroke. That should go all the way. Ganga has looked very, very good. He moves on to 37. It's almost been a faultless innings on his part. Just waited for the ball to be in his areas, and, and that's one of them. That's very well played. It's a long way in front of square. In fact, it's wide of mid on. And Makayandini almost disbelieving that look on his face. And he's probably looking down at the pitch and thinking, well, it's not bouncing as much as from the other end, just reinforcing the point you're talking about. It's not that short, this. It's in the air. Of catch it. Oh, and he's good. goodness, I thought he had got it. I really thought he had got it. Got it in his hands. He had to dive to his right. The hard work had pretty much been done. Well, you'd set him up for it, Makai and Tini. And Sam Wells took the bait. Hit it firmly. Maybe Harris could have moved a little faster to his right, but got two hands to it, but just couldn't keep it in. He goes goalkeeper fashion. There's lots of time if he makes this. Kayada is not so sure if he did, so he's asked for an opinion from upstairs. Yeah, he thinks it's safe, though. And the yeah from the South Africans was not too convincing. It was more in hope than anything else. You never know, though, with direct hits. Grounds his bet before goodness me there you go you never know with direct hits it looked all so elementary like he was just running to make his ground no trouble whatsoever the umpire also sort of nodded his head and shook his head thinking well not too sure but it it should be safe as it turns out Darren Ganga is gone just ambled across for what was supposed to be a simple single and what is done has presented South Africa with a little opening here. Here it is, nudged into the offside. Herschel Gibbs is quick. He gets there, takes aim and throws and hits the target. Ganga grounds his bat and everything, but hasn't run quick enough. He'll be livid with himself. He's gone for 45 after working so hard. 122 for three. 
Shiv Narayan Chandapur. Walks to the wicket and will be at the non-striker's end. And watch as the rest of this over gets bowled. Out! That's exactly what's happened. Samuels going for a big hook, drags it back onto the off stump. And now we will see. One, two, three, four. Well, two quick wickets just shows you what a run out can do. Trouble now for the West Indies. South Africa strike back. Dale Stain does the damage. Samuels is on his way for a well played 40. it is 123 for four Dwayne Bravo playing his 24th test match averaging 33 two centuries 850s closing in on 1500 runs just over the slips it'll go run away for four was deliberately played there by Dwayne Bravo. Because I think if you've got a lot of overs left in the game and on this pitch where it is doing a little bit, I think you've got as much of a chance of getting out if you're just trying to defend. Guys have catch it, he's out, he's gone. Harris gets his man. Bravo unsettled by that uh, staying over previously. Looking for the big one, looking to go over the top. And South Africa claimed their fifth wicket. Well, it felt like it was a matter of time. Didn't expect him to go to the spinner. But Dwayne Bravo, soft as you like, just chips it up to mid on. Thought he'd have gone to the quicker stuff. The spinner gets him. Harris has taken a wicket. Dwayne Bravo has gone for 10. It's 141 for 5. The story of his test career. Apparently he's a better player than that average. It's a young career, it's it's growing. You'll need to keep Chandler for company at least to the close of play. Swift looking to attack now with a slip a gully. Silly point short leg. Dinesh Ramden hails from the Twin Island Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. So, spin will be nothing new. There's Bravo's dismissal. He's also from Trinidad and Tobago. Out! Stain a strike. So, South Africa on a little roll. The man that's kept it together for them. He's gone, Chanapal. First time in this test match, we see some genuine joy from the South Africans. And a score of less than 400 quite possible here Chandra Paul committing, committing the cardinal error of playing away from his body that ball just going across him and a good catch a good low catch by Jack Callis Chivalry and Chandra Paul never got going he's gone for eight West Indies 141 for six Darren Sammy the new batsman They've been very comfortable with things so far. It's been a fairly eventful little couple of overs or so. Bravo going, Chandapal going. We've uh, started well, out by suggesting that South Africa have got a good chance of winning. You know, I reckon the West Indies are safe. We've been in for 10 minutes. <laughs> Cries of uh, LBW and Alim Dar's finger goes up. Fully still every plate around it. And Harris picks up his uh, second wicket of the innings. Oh, it has changed all of a sudden. Looking pretty safe and certain for the West Indians. Bowling on that big lead. And now they're seven down. Well, this one pitched leg stump and, leg stump and straightened. 
No question that it would have hit the stumps. A simple decision for Alim Da. Darren Sami goes for three. It's 144 for seven. Jerome Taylor, the new batsman. Warm reception from a few of the players, including Andre Nell. South Africa are used to winning. They got a shock in the first innings, but they've now given themselves a, themselves a glimpse of hope in the second. So don't I wouldn't write them off. And I would think that this game is leaning more in their favor at this point. With seven West Indies wickets down for a lead of less than 400. And two days to play. That's out. That is out. Just fended it off Ramdin. And a simple catch for Herschel Gibbs. So I've got to correct myself. It's now eight wickets down. For 144. Short ball. Ramdin tried to play. Got too big for him. And just lobbed to Gibbs, who just who doesn't drop those. So the game is turning. Another wicket gone, rammed in without scoring. West Indies 144 for eight. New batsman Darren Powell. Someone is going to have to get a get a hundred. He's got to keep the innings together. They'll have to get to get through two new balls. You've really got to bowl badly to lose a match with that sort of lead. The umpires have made the decision. That's close of play on day three with the West Indians at 146 for eight. And South Africa pleased with their performance in the last hour or so of cricket. Produced wickets. And for the West Indians at one stage looking comfortable, looking as if uh, they would eventually look at a declaration come tomorrow. It suddenly all turned in a flash and you'll be a lot more relieved this evening, Mickey Arthur. The job not over yet. There's still a big mountain to climb. And one has to say that, in my opinion, things still favour the West Indians. The story of the session, it all happened.